Hey guys, I just want to do a quick video on how to get 240p output from a Raspberry Pi. So I've been trying this for a while and I've been having a lot of trouble because I've been using the HDMI out port of this, the digital out. Um, and I've been trying to go through HDMI to VGA converters as well as HDMI to component. And while these things work great for other projects, um, the code I was using doesn't change the HDMI output. What you actually need is an analog output. So this board right here, I got directly from Pi Supply, but you have to build it yourself. It's got a bunch of resistors and just the connector. Um, and you know, it's kind of a fun soldering project if you're, you know, if you don't do much soldering. Me personally, I'd rather spend all that time doing like another RGB mod or something. So if you want one pre-made, just check out the link in the description and it'll go right to the eBay sellers that have them pre-made and ship worldwide. But what I want to show now is a very quick and easy way to get 240p output using this or any other analog adapter. Um, and I'm specifically going to show RetroPie and RecallBox because they're kind of two different ways of doing it. But these methods should work on all of the different Raspberry Pi uh, software configs. Um, and if not, just let me know in the description and I'll try to update anything. Or uh, let me know in the comments and I'll update the description. So I'm just going to get my software ready and get to it. Okay, so I'm going to start with RetroPie just because it's easier. Um, I have my 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Just putting that right in. And then once it's detected, I load up SD Formatter. And make sure you have the correct drive selected. And then I always use the format option size adjust on. That way if you have a large card, it expands to the whole thing. And it's pretty quick. Then open up Win32 Disk Imager. Um, and then make sure the correct device is selected. And then select the correct image file. So I'm just using RetroPie. And then hit Write. It won't take too long, but uh, I'll speed up the video just so you don't have to sit through it. Okay, so now that it says Write Successful, um, you want to open up the drive itself. So you'll see this has the full contents of it. And now you just go to the config text file. Um, you should probably, uh, if you're using a Windows machine, I would open it with WordPad just so you could actually see the structure. But um, you want to scroll down to the very bottom. And then you're going to add this code, and this is the code that it's found in the description of this video, so you don't have to worry about retyping it or anything. But literally just add that to the bottom, hit save, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Then just um, eject the card, and you're all done. Now this will actually just boot in uh, 240p. So let me just get a quick video and show you how that works. Okay, so I have this hooked up um, into my 8-inch BVM that does not accept 480p. It only accepts 240p and 480i. Um, and it's best to run this through an Extron RXI interface uh, so it combines the sync. So I'm just going to plug this sucker in. And you should notice it start to boot. Yep, there you go. And there it is. So it is already in 240p and you don't have to do anything. Um, I definitely suggest using an Extron RXI or some kind of sync combiner for the VGA port because the VGA will output RGB HV, so horizontal and vertical sync. In some PVM and BVMs, you could actually plug it right, in, uh, right into the back or use a Y connector. And while it will work and while it might be safe depending on the monitor and the setup, you're actually sending two signals, so double the voltage down the line. Um, and there's no way that could be good in the long run. So I definitely suggest some kind of sync combiner or even just make your own circuit. You could Google how to do that. I think it's just a few resistors. Um, and you could probably even make a SCART or VGA to SCART cable for that too. Um, but basically, this is pretty much it. Now you'll see it boot right into RetroPie.
Okay, now I'll show you how to do it for recall box or for any Linux distribution that requires a boot before it generates the config text file. So put the SD card back into it and go back into SD formatter. And it's just the same procedure as last time because you see uh, you want the format size adjustment on. Go through the quick format. And when it's done, you'll notice that it says EXFAT. So that's going to be an issue because Recallbox will not run off of EXFAT. So you need a program called FAT32 Format. Um, and I just sat it right in the root of my D drive. So I could uh, show you right here, FAT32 Format. And it's the F drive. And that's it. Um, it's an extra step, but it's a very easy extra step. So as you can see, it now says FAT32, not EXFAT. So now that that's done, you would go into recall box um, and then just drag and drop the entire contents of the zip file over to that SD card. So as this is copying over, um, it's not creating the config text file because that happens upon first boot. So now that this is done, uh, we're gonna eject it and then just boot it directly using the HDMI output first. Okay, I'm just going to plug this in, and I'm uh, really sorry for the cheesy cell phone video, but for whatever reason, both my capture card or my computer monitor wouldn't accept the HDMI signal from the Raspberry Pi, so I'm just going to use my plasma to do this. Um, now, it's going to take forever to boot, so I'm going to speed this video up, but definitely you have to wait until it's up to the main recall box page, or um, main screen. Okay, so that was like three minutes, um, but now that it's up, uh, I'm just going to hit select on the controller and go to shut down system, and that's it. Now I'm going to uh, edit the SD card. So now, if you put that SD card back into a Windows machine, you'll actually notice that you only see the, um, the basic files. You don't actually see the config text file. So what you'll actually need is either a Mac or a Linux computer. So I'm going to use a Linux computer to show you how to actually get to the file. So all I did was use VirtualBox to create a virtual Linux machine inside of my Windows PC. So once you do that, you, when you put in the SD card, you could actually see root uh, and all of the other settings, including the boot partition. So then you just open up config text, and it's the exact same as with the other one. You just have to do it in Linux. So I'm scrolling down to the bottom, and then uh, I'm taking the other code, putting it back, hit and save, and that's it. Then you could just eject it, and you're good to go. Okay, so after you've edited the config file in Linux, then you just plug it in, and don't be alarmed, but it'll take forever for it to actually show up on the screen. Uh, so while we're waiting, I just want to thank uh, Paulo Limos from the Permabio Project in Portugal, who kind of passed a lot of this info over to me. Um, I was really getting stuck on the whole analog versus digital thing, but uh, that kind of solved it. Oh, see, there you go. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you have a Linux computer, uh, it's pretty easy um, because you don't actually have to use a virtual machine, but basically the bigger step with this than all the rest is just simply that you have to boot into the HDMI outputting version of it so it creates the boot partition. Other than that, uh, it's pretty much straightforward. So this should be everything you need to know to get a Raspberry Pi 240p gaming machine. Um, and this is my preferred way to do it, recall box. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, everything comes pre-configured and ready to go. You just have to either add your ROMs via Linux, or if you plug in a network cable, you could just get it over the network. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, any comments or criticism or tips or anything, just post down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.